coming up but it's not there yet praise the lord he needs more energy praise the lord he needs more fire praise the lord oh you need to do better praise the lord hallelujah this is the very last day of this month the very last day it is such a wonderful thing to, to end the day in the presence of God. It's such a wonderful thing to come into the house of God and end a day. And we are beginning the end of this month in the house of God. Give God the glory for it. Thank God for his faithfulness for your life. Thank God for his faithfulness. I want you to thank God. I want you to thank God for his faithfulness over your life, over your family, over all that the Lord has given unto you. Thank him for his faithfulness. He has been faithful. If we begin to count all the things that he has done, I'm sure we will run out of numbers. But this, our father has been very faithful. If you say, God, you have been faithful, you are not telling a lie. Because indeed he has been very faithful. We see his faithfulness despite all of our shortcomings. The, our father has been very faithful. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. We started this month in you. Today is the last day we are in your presence. What a wonderful thing. We give you all the praise for the enablement and the grace to be able to stand before you. To offer you worship and praise that is acceptable this morning. We are very grateful. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you for the things that you have already done. Thank you for the manifestation of the things that you have done. Let your name and your name alone be glorified. Father Lord, like always and like never before, have your way. Do only what you can do. Jehovah, have your way. We want you to show yourself in our midst in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, bring your word, oh God. 
Speak to us, O God. Let both the speaker and the hearer of this word be blessed mightily in the name of Jesus. Lord Jehovah, let it not be the words of men, but let it be the word from the throne room of grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the sleep of clay speak that that you want us to hear in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the words that will proceed out of this mouth and out of this altar, let it be backed up with fire in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. No negative words will be issued in the name of Jesus, but every word of prayer that will be said on this altar, let it be back up with your authority in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let it not become, let it not be ordinary words, but let it become fire in the name of Jesus. And let your name alone be glorified and let us receive the blessings in turn in Jesus' almighty name. We have prayed. Amen. And as we sit down, take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel, nothing more. And when you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glow. Take the stage, Lord. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. I'm just a vessel or nothing. Take the stage, Lord. Take the stage, Lord. And have your way. I'm just a vessel. Nothing more. And when we're done, please take the That's our prayer that the Lord will be glorified and we will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are rounding up this beautiful month. This is our month to arise in. I'm sure we are rose and we are shining. I'm sure that the glory of the Lord is evidence in our lives and everywhere we go, we bring the light. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we are going to, for the benefit of those of us that were not on the prayer line on Monday, we are going to be praying today. We are going to, we are not excited that we are praying. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It looks like some people don't like to pray. Okay, so we'll be praying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll be praying and we are going to still be talking about the theme of the month. Because today is the last day and we are not going to leave any stone Unturned, we are going to make sure that mountains move in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So like we were saying from the beginning of the month, it's our month to arise and shine. And a couple of Sundays ago, about two weeks ago, Pastor Nee told us about the shining part. We are supposed to shine. We have stars. It's, it's our time to, you know, shine forth and everything. And on Friday, we started talking about the arise part for us to arise. Because you cannot shine sitting down. You cannot shine hiding. You cannot shine in isolation. You, shall, you cannot shine covered up. You cannot shine when you are defeated. You cannot shine when you think you have failed. You can only shine when you arise. You cannot shine hiding. You cannot, you cannot put a candle and put it under. It's not going to make any effect. Or maybe make a very small effect. So we have to shine Yes, but we have to arise to be able to. We have to arise to be able to. So like we said on Monday, arise is not a suggestion. What is it? 
It's a command. Arise is a command. You are not, God is not telling you, he's not suggesting to you to arise. He is commanding you to arise. Thank you. Arise. It is a command. And what happens when your commander has issued a command? You obey. You fall in alignment. You do as you have been told. If you are not arising, there is a problem. Because it is not God's error. God cannot lie. If God say arise, that is what he has said. That is what he has said. He cannot take his word back. He said his word will not come back to him void until it has accomplished that that he has sent it out to. It is not for you to begin to think about it. It's for you to take action. When the word of the Lord proceeded out of his mouth and said for you to arise, you are supposed to arise. You are supposed to arise. You're supposed to arise. And to arise means to be awake, to be alert, to be on guard. You are supposed to be prepared for action. That is what arise means. Prepare for action. Remember the word arise came before the shine. So arise is preparing you to shine. So there's no way you can shine without you first arising. You have to first arise and then you will shine. You have to arise and you will shine. The prepare, it's preparing you to kickstart, to start, to get ready, to stand guard, to be ready for action. Arise is what precedes the action. Arise. In Isaiah 60 verse 1, it says, arise, shine. You cannot shine in Eden. You have to arise. And to go into action... You must know the person that has commanded. Who has commanded? God. Who issued this command? God. And who is this God to you? He is your father. He is your friend. He is your guide. He is everything. But you know when somebody commands, usually, our father does not, they don't usually command us. Do they? Sometimes, yes. <laughs> okay. It's usually not a command. because I don't hear my husband command the children. Israel, come. Enoch, go. Go and do this. Go and do that. And sometimes when you say, Israel. But I just called you, but I'm coming. How's coming, mommy? That's not how you do when a commander commands. When you hear Bolanle, you run. Because he is the Lord, the one in charge. So yes, he is our father, but he is the one in charge. So when the one in charge commands, he is not suggesting for you whether to come or not. He has commanded you will listen whether your shoe is on, whether you are half dressed, whether well, it doesn't matter. You just have to come. Because it is a command. It is a command. So when the commander in chief had spoken, you just have to fall in alignment. You just have to fall in place. You just have to do it. Arise. Be alert. Be ready. Prepare for action. Stand on guard. Stand in your guard post. Look and be ready. You cannot be sitting down and praying that you are shining. You cannot sit down and say, I'm shining. You are doing the same thing. You are shining. How? Don't let this word go. Today is the last day. So I thank God that this word is coming before the end of the month. Before we move out of this month. 24 hours, it's not, we don't even have 24 hours. Whatever is left in this month is still enough for you to get up and make up your mind to go. Arise. No more slumberness. There was something that I was supposed to have done. And... I opened my, my journal and I saw it in there. And I said, ah, Bumi, you did not arise. But pertaining to this matter, procrastination. Oh, they will now come and give you penalty for that. And you will say, the devil has come to steal and to, no, you are the one that started that. 
It has nothing to do with the devil. Many a times we live the things that we are supposed to do. And a word will come. I was reading somebody. I, I, I came across a video a couple of days ago. And the lady was saying, they have given them a word for the month. This was a, an old video. I think it was from February, but I just saw it. And she said, they have given them a word for the month. She said, I'm, I'm deliberate about it. What do you do with the word of God? Are you deliberate about it? Do you actually take the word? I don't, I go around every day. I have my sticky notes at work. I go around every day saying the word. It's not going to sink in if you are just hearing it and forgetting it. Looking in the mirror and look, uh, my pancake is good and you just move away. And then you come next week Sunday, they'll say it again, it's arise and oh yeah, we are supposed to arise. And then you will move into the week, not taking any action. What is it that you have now come to do on a Sunday? And the lady said, I'm deliberate about this word. She said, I am so deliberate, I am going to leave this word. He said, every single time that they have spoken words to me in my church, I hear people testify. He said, but this month, I'm deliberate. And I quickly click to see if there's an up-to-date. I wanted to see an update. Okay, when you did it, what then happened? When you did it, what then happened? She said, she is so deliberate about it. It's everywhere. She turned everywhere and she see the word. She said, when her phone is ringing, it's a song similar to the word of the month. So when her phone is ringing, it's reminding her of the word. She is listening to it. She's walking in it. She's living it. She's expectant. Are you even expectant? Today is the 30th of April. The month that we should... How many things are you alert on? How many things were you supposed to do the beginning of this month and you have done? How many? So when you were here, the word, what happened to it? You're supposed to take the word of the Lord literally face value and run with it. Arise means arise. There's no two way to, there's nothing to it. Search the scripture. Go look inside the Bible. Look. My, my, what I'm, I'm waiting for, what am I, right? I'm supposed to arise from, might be different from yours. Then I begin to look. And couple, was it that yesterday or the day before yesterday? And the Holy Spirit was saying, you need to arise from procrastination. But me, you need to arise. I know how many, how much <laughs> I have paid when it comes to lateness of paying bills. But me, you need to arise. You ask Holy Spirit, please lead me. Tell me. And every single time, the Holy Spirit is telling me, and I'll say, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Every time I acknowledge it, thank you, Holy Spirit, but I don't still do it right away. I'll say, okay, I'm going to set an alarm. Tomorrow morning by 7 o'clock, first thing on my desk, 7 o'clock will come, alarm will come, and I will forget the reason why I've set it. <laughs> my husband will remind me, I'll say, what well, I have heard. And I will still not do it. And I pray, rebuke the devourer for my sake. Who is the devourer really? It has nothing to do with the devil. The devil is not coming near my money. It's me, myself. I need to arise. So if you don't even dwell in the word, you don't know, you will not know what to arise from. So you will think when they tell you to arise, it's something else. Arise from procrastination. Arise from it. Stop sitting down and say, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Many things are on our desks. Many things are on our, on our to-do list. Many things does not even need anything. It's just for us to send an application. Shikena. It's not, it's not asking for food. Some of these things, we don't even have to pay for anything. Apply for something. They say they are giving grants. Go and apply for it. For me, apply for it. Pastor Kaya, that's what sent me some. I have still not applied for them. And I said, ah, thank you, Holy Spirit, for 
<laughs> for opening my eyes, I need to arise. I need to arise from procrastination. Procrastination is the stealer of joy, stealer of time, and stealer of every good thing. Because there is the time and the chance, the opportunity. You need to arise. Tell yourself, I need to arise. I need to arise. We know the one that has commanded. We know the one that has spoken. If there's nothing for you to arise from, he will not say it to you. If there's nothing for you to do about it, God will not bring it to you. If you did not have to arise from anything, God is not a talker. If he will not just talk because he wants to talk. The things that we are praying for, many times we are praying, binding, casting, losing, binding again. And God is saying, <laughs> only if this my daughter will just arise, only if my son will just arise and stop wasting their time. Only if you will take a step. Somebody said, if it is prayer alone, prayer is very important, by the way. If it is prayer alone that makes people rich, there will be billionaires in Nigeria. If it is prayers alone. But do you know a lot of Christians, they are in the church, they are praying for miracles, and they are standing in that one spot praying. Open heavens, and God is saying, Arise from your slumberness. Get up. Oh. Watch. Then pray. What are you watching for? What are you praying about? The way you pray, do you even expect? When you are praying, do you have expectation that these prayers will be answered? Because if you don't have expectation, there's no need to pray. Do you pray to receive? Or you pray just because it's routine? Do you actually pray for open heavens? When they say, all right, do you actually mean it? Because if you don't, you're not going to look out for it. If you're just praying because everybody else is praying, you are not going to look out for anything. If God is talking, you will not even hear. You will not understand. Because as far as you're concerned, your mind is not prepared to receive. So when, pray, when you're praying, you know, some people, we just love to pray and it's good to pray. We pray about every single thing, but we don't move about every. We don't move. We don't. And when you don't move, as far as I am concerned, you are not expectant. For example, you are praying for scholarship. You are praying for scholarship to a school, a very nice school. Are you just going to pray and not apply? You're just going to pray and leave it. God, ah, I want this one. Father, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And you will spend 40 days praying night and day. Please, go and break your fast and eat. Because you cannot just be praying and not doing anything. Then yes, there's the fact that God will tell you, be still and know I am God. But it is not when you are looking for a job. You need to apply to get a job. Have we had testimonies of people that job came and walked into and just ran into them? I have heard it before. But how many people do you know that sat in their house and job came looking for them? When God is saying for you to arise, it means you need to do something. Arise, shine. The shining that is not your job. Yours is to arise. This gross darkness outside. If you do not shine, the darkness will prevail. Get up. Sh begin, to sh begin to arise first. And then you will shine. Arise. And then you, you, you will shine. The one that has promised is the one that can be trusted. The one that has promised is the one that can be trusted. So now that you know the one that has promised, the one that has spoken can be trusted, what are you then going to do? You are then going to arise. It says that you should arise. For some people, they have to arise from sickness. 
Yesterday, my husband and I, we were praying. And I said, I really mean it. I don't want to use medicine for anything. And I'm sure in this church you are aware. I have been saying it and I know the day will come. When I will stand on this pulpit and on this exalted altar of God and share the testimony that I am off medication. Because it bothers me that as a child of God, I'm using medicine. So I'm not just hearing the word. I'm also internalizing it. I accept, my body already accepted. It. it needs to conform to the word of God. My body must conform to the word of God. Am I going to be stupid and stop the medication without the doctors telling me to do so? Of course I will not do that. But my doctor already told me, you're not just going to stop. You're going to come. There will be a consultation. We will, re we will reduce the dose. We might tell you, skip one day, use one day, skip one day. And we'll see how your body adjusts to it. That's when you come off it. And I know that expected and I receive it in Jesus' name. Because what will I tell an unbeliever? What is it about my life that, won't, that will want you to come? Jesus already bore my sicknesses, my diseases upon himself. Me carrying it is affliction arising another time. So I stand on that word and I say, eh, eh, it's in the word of God that affliction shall not arise the second time. Jesus already points. That was the first time. Me carrying it on my body is impossible. If it has come, it must return back. And I'm sure by the mercy of God that I will stand on this altar and I will testify. And you will testify as well in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus told the man by the pool of Bethsaida, John chapter 5, verse 8. He says to him, arise. Healing will not come with him still laying on that bed. You cannot say, I am healed. And you are still saying, my high blood pressure. You are owning it. You cannot begin to speak your, your mouth. Use your mouth to speak that you are healed. And you are saying, my, my high blood pressure, God forbid. My, this one, God, my, 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 my. You are laying, laying claim to it. You are holding it and not letting it go. It does not happen. When my children were much younger, every time I will say, I'm well, I'm strong. And so, so why are you laying on the bed? <laughs> I am not sick. I am strong. You, you call the things that are not as, as though they, they were. So you are not going to begin to lay claim on things that does not belong to you. It belongs to the pit of hell. That is where it will reside. Not on our bodies. He told the guy, he said, get up, rise up, take your bed and walk. He cannot take his bed on that bed. He cannot walk on that bed. He needs to first get up. You get up. If you don't get up, how would you take your bed? If you don't get up, how will you work? You need to first get up and stop being on that same bed where people come and pity you. Oh, sorry. Oh, it is your headache again. Oh, it is your blood pressure again. Oh, it is your... No, it is not mine. Mm -mm. Does not belong to us. Even when I was filling the form at the doctor's place, when they asked, does this and this and this happen in your family? I'm like, what kind of evilness is this one? I don't want to claim what does not belong to me. I belong to the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood that flows in my veins are the blood of Jesus. I don't carry any of those genes. I just go, oh my God, why? I was at the doctor's place on Friday. And they were saying, as this, oh. I just skipped the whole thing. I hadn't let them the paper. Because I do not want to claim what does not belong to me. Especially the prayer that I had that Friday. It was not the one that I want to now. It, it might be a test. I don't want to now receive what I did not bargain for. I did not bargain for any of those. So I'm like, mm -mm, it does not belong to me. And you, and you know when you fill those forms, they look at it word for word. 
But for whatever reason, they did not see these ones. They collected it from me like that. They received it and they didn't bring it back. You didn't feel it. You know how they will tell you? Many times they have returned it. Oh, you need to answer. You need to feel it. They did not return it back to me. I'm like, glory be to God. This is, is gone forever. Because I did not feel it out. I know they might return it back if you don't feel it out. They have done it to me many times. You need to arise from your fear. You need to arise from your fear. Many things that we have not done is because of fear. What if they say no? Let them at least do it. Because I'm not going to say they will say no because they will not say no. Amen. Do it. A lot of things we have not done as a result of the fear. We are afraid of rejection. We are afraid to fail. We are afraid to start. We are afraid, we are afraid, we are afraid. Pastor Bias was saying this morning, some people are afraid to go into a relationship again. Some people, they have child one time, they are afraid to go another time. We are afraid. <laughs> because of many things. We don't want to do many things because of fear. God is saying to you, get out of this fear. Get out of this fear. You know, get out. And sometimes you are afraid of the enemy. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. You should not be afraid of the enemy. They should be afraid of you. Those that know they are God. They shall be strong and they will do exploit. You cannot be afraid of the enemy. You know, I was sharing with, I think, School of Disciples the, um, some, sometimes. I said, the, I saw a video and a lady was saying how she's one of the soldiers of the devil. She said Satan, actually. And she said, in this New York, she was in charge of, she was in charge of, I think, Bronx. And her job is to go and cause havoc, to go and cause death. She said, and she, when I saw this video, I thought it was a joke. And I began to read the comments on that. People that were in the, the same coven as I were commenting. This is not in Nigeria and it's not African magic. And they were commenting. And I've seen many videos of people saying, oh, this accident that happened on this way, I caused it to happen. And that one that happened on that way, I caused it to happen because the Satan wanted something, something pints of blood and they must give it. And I'm talking about not only one particular race, every single person going. And I was clicking on their picture. I'm like, ah, are these people real? Are they generated by computer? I mean, they are real, real people. And I was looking at their profiles. And they have families. In this America, in this New York. And this lady was boldly talking about all of these things. And another guy was saying, he was, he, was, he, he was in his living room. I think I shared it with the SOD people. He was in his living room or somewhere. And some Christians gathered. They were praying. At maybe at the corner of his street. And they, he was like, who are these people disturbing my peace? And he came out. He wanted to come and strike them. And as he was trying to do something to them, a power fell upon him and he fell or something like that. afraid of you? Why should you be afraid of them? That is why our mouth is zipped. I was sharing with Sister Daniel yesterday. The prayer on Monday. What I saw that night on that Monday night. Sometimes when God gives you a vision to pray for someone, the first thing that comes to my mind, I'm not going to lie. I cover my children with the blood of Jesus. I cover my husband with the blood of Jesus. Before I begin to do the work of the Father, because I am afraid. I don't want anything to tamper with my home. And I began to cover, cover, cover before I begin to pray. These people, they don't cover up. They know the power that is behind them. Do you know the power that is behind you? 
Do you know the power that is inside of you? Because greater is he that is the one inside of you than he that is in the world. These people are not afraid. They don't care. They don't know. They try you. And if there's power, they back off. You are called, they attack. Simple. Bolani, did you watch the video? Oh, you were afraid to see. Oh, you were. And, and this, this, they don't, they come to you. They don't care. They attack you. That's why you cannot afford to be lukewarm. You cannot not or even talk of being cold. Because they try it all the time. When they come, they cannot penetrate. That's when they go back. And it is not because of the power that you have that they are not attacking. They are going to attack anyways. So when they attack and they see something, they back off. They don't see anything. They dwell there. This is an, a place for them. You cannot be afraid of them. Can you please give us NLT? Thank you. You cannot be afraid of them. You cannot be fearful as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a child of God. Because that one that is in you is greater than the one that is in them. Be beginning today, I will make people throughout the earth terrified because of you. When they hear reports about you, they will tremble and dread. It is not you that should be afraid of the devil. If you know your God. If you know that the Lord is, has all the power, you will not be afraid of them. They should be afraid of you. And you should arise from darkness. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He said, all around there might be darkness. But when the glory of the Lord shone upon you, you will not bring the light. So you need to arise so that there will be no more darkness. You need to arise and bring the light. Arise and get over this Jordan. You see, after the Jordan is the promised land. After the Jordan is the prepared place of God for the children of Israel. After the Jordan. So if they do not cross the Jordan, they are not going to the prepared place of God for them. And God has a place prepared for you. Unless you cross your Jordan. You have to cross your Jordan. And for many of us, our Jordan are different. Some to some is fear. You have to cross your Jordan. You have to go to the prepared place. You cannot be afraid of the water. Because the thing is, the water will not be divided unless you take a step. If you do not take a step, the water will be there. It is by faith you can cross the Jordan. It is by faith you can move to the other side. It is by faith you can navigate it. If you keep standing and being afraid to cross this Jordan, Jordan is not going anywhere. And the promised land is waiting for you. You need to cross your Jordan to move to the place that God has prepared for you. Jordan is the only route to get to the promised land. It is the only place that you would have to go through to get to the place where God has prepared for you. The place that is flowing with milk and with honey. You would have to arise from the old man. You have to arise from the old man. I'm sure we are aware of what the old man is. The old man is this flesh, this vehicle, this body that we carry. When we say arise from the old man, you have to arise from your sinful nature. You have to arise from the things that make you fall. You have to arise from the bait of the devil. You have to arise from it. You know the story of the prodigal son. Another version call it the story of the lost son. In Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 24. You know, he got up one day for the sake of our time because I want us to pray. I'm just going to summarize it. I wanted us to read it, but please read it at your own time. 
He woke up one day, he got up and he said, you know what, daddy, I'm, I'm sorry, I gotta go. I'm going to go, I'm not going to be here anymore. I want to move, I want to be alone, I just, just give me my inheritance, whatever belongs to me, share it to me now and give it to me and let me go. And he went and he blew it all up. And then there was nothing. And all of a sudden, he was like, oh my God, money is gone. You know when you have money, you have friends. You people will be around you. But the moment the floor is dry, they will be dry. They will just evaporate. And that was exactly what happened. There was nothing else, no money. He was feeding with the swine, the, the food that belongs to the pigs. That was what he was eating. And then the Bible says, he thought in his head that maybe I should arise and go to my father. That even slaves at my father's palace, they are not eating with the pigs. They are, they are eating very well. Even be, if because I have taken my inheritance, he would not even take me back as a child. Even a slave will be better than the position that he was. And he got up and he went to his father. From afar, his father saw him. He was pleased to receive him. And he welcomed him home. Go welcome him home. Kill Ram. Let us celebrate. For this one was dead and is alive now. He was lost his back. Many people thought their sins are too big for God to forgive. Many people think, and you know the accuser. <laughs> he will flash it in your head a million times. I, 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 read, I watched somebody's testimony. How he, is, he said the devil tormented him. Tormented her. She said, I, I, I think it was FOL, FOL last two weeks ago, um, Festival of Life in London. And she was sharing the testimony how she was dating a guy and she left the guy. I was like, you know, I can't do this anymore. And she said the devil tormented her. For months she was depressed, she had mental, she went into mental, whatever. She was not able, she was a worship leader, she was not able to go to church for months I think for two years, she was not able to go to church. She said every single time she would come to church or be in a um, church gathering or setting, that the devil would remind her that you, you are this, you are that. Oh, you left the brother because he doesn't have money. You da 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 And all of the torment. Then he, she was tormented for months. She almost, she tried, she attempted suicide, I think once or twice. Because it was just too much for her. And she almost gave up. He said, but Jesus grabbed her by the, by the wrist and brought her back. And she was sharing in front of everybody the testimony. You know, how God, how God saved her. And this story of the prodigal son reminded me of the story of a friend of mine. I met this friend of mine. Um, 20, 2002, when I came to America, yeah, yeah, I met this friend of mine at, um, King's Plaza Mall. I was shopping, I went there, I was working at one of the stores there. And these two Nigerian guys, they walked into the store and they were talking. So one was telling the other, I'm going to go and talk to that beautiful girl. The other one was like, no, 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 I'll go and talk to her. So they were debating. <laughs> and then the older guy, one that looks a little older, said, ah, look at the way she's dressed. I'm sure she had told her people at home that she works at one bank or something like that. They were saying it in Yoruba. And then they walked to where I was, and I was, I was standing by the rack where they have expensive um, jackets. And they have them, you know how they, they put sensor and you cannot take it out unless somebody come and put code. All right, so they, they now moved towards it. And as they were touching the rack and doing stuff, the guy was like, I'll talk to her now. No, no I'm not going to talk to her now. They were deb debating and debating. And somebody was like, ah, this jacket. Then I said in Yoruba, you cannot afford it. You cannot afford it. And both of them ran away. <laughs> because everything that they had said before, I heard every single thing. That's how I became the guy's friend. So 
he introduced himself to me and gave me a mother's maiden name as his last name. Because even if I mention the name, I'm sure you will know the person. You might know the person. Very rich. He's from a very rich family. But he came here. He was doing security. He was struggling. And his wife was pregnant. They didn't have, and all, one day he just came out. He will come and show, 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 show. Do you know what happened? Ah, ah, like, hey, we have no bought this. We have no bought that. And I, and I'm like, ah. you did not know baby was coming a whole nine months. You did not plan. You did not buy baby creep for a whole nine months. And we did uh, went out, did shopping. I organized a, a, a baby shower. And <laughs> we had the baby. And then one day. He just called me. Boom, show, show. That's where he will call me. I'm going to Nigeria. I said, ah, for what? Number one, I didn't even know they had papers. <laughs> I'm like, why? Are they calling you? Are they dragging you? Is it magnets? African magic, they have dragged you. He was like, no, I'm going. Because my father wants me. I said, your father. Ah, your father wants you. He said, yes. He now told me his father's name. I said, that uh, is a lie. That cannot be your father. He'll be doing security. Doing security with one store in King's Plaza. Your, that's your, your father. That can't be your father. I now called my husband. He was still in Nigeria. They were London. I said, do you know this person? He said, it is impossible for that person's child to be in Nigeria doing security. I said, aha. Uh -huh. I said, so too. He cannot be the child of... Then he now narrated the story to me. And he said, I have to go now because my dad has given me ultimatum of two... What had happened is, his father's friend's son came to do shopping from Nigeria and saw him doing security. And now called his own father to say, I see your son, your son's friend doing security. He said, no, it cannot be him that you saw. It is impossible. They now called him. He said, yeah, my son is in America, but he's not doing security. No, he cannot be doing security. <laughs> And the father now called him and said, whatever you're doing, I want you in Nigeria tomorrow. Bumi, where is money for ticket? I said, ah, the rich father that you call must give you money for ticket. He could not tell his father that he does not have money for ticket. He told the father that he works with um, HSBC or something. I said, ha. He said, I have to go, but I have to be in Nigeria tomorrow. He said, I am the signatory to my father's account in this place. In this. I say, hey, you left all of that to come and suffer here. And your, your wife will send you out because you have not got baby food. You left it for months. You have to come to my house to go and eat food. This is serious. I could not believe the story. So he went home. We got our money, bought ticket, and he went home. And when he came back, he came to pick his wife and his son. This guy is the general manager. I can't mention. I cannot. It, it was too, I'm like, ah, if my father has a quarter of your father's money, I'm not coming to America. To come and do what? The first house he bought in America, no lie, word of a story. I mean, twin, Trump Tower. Trump Tower. When I go to the house, in, towards going on to your side, around that area, that's where they are building is. And I go to the building. I looked and I remember the <laughs> one building in Brooklyn Avenue. One mouse and cockroach infested building that they were living that when you go in the, in the elevator, pee will be reeking from every corner. And I went to visit them in Twin Tower. And I said, ha, ah, you like suffering, oh. You, and when, we, <laughs> when I go to the apartment, I'm like, you left this for that. <sighs> what am I saying? Go back to your father. 
I don't mean your heavenly father because your father might not, might not have money like my own father, but you have a father that all that you need is in his hands. When I went for the, because when they, when I, they had a baby, they were not officially married. They married America way. I was part of their bridal train. When I tell you that their wedding was a carnival, you know when they are giving you wedding gifts and they are cars with ribbons. Cars with ribbon. Cars with ribbon as wedding gifts. I'm like, you left all of this to come here. Please don't leave the treasure of heaven for lack. Your father has it all. Don't try to do it. He wants to make it by himself. I'm like, who does that even? Who does that? Go look, collect money from your father. He said, he has said it. That his father loaned him a million to start a business. How many of us have father to loan us one million US dollars? But we have a father. Don't, don't continue to do it by yourself. Don't continue to use your head knowledge. You will only live in mouse infested house. Ha! Huh. You think you're enjoying? You depend on your father. And you will see that it will take you to a place bigger than Trump Tower. Amen. Don't continue to do it by yourself. Don't continue to fight this, this ownership with God. Number one, he created you. you are, but um, sand, clay. He's the one that makes mold fill you up. Depend on him. Don't try to do it by yourself. So many times we don't realize that because you are sitting here beautiful, it is not because you know how to do it. It's by his grace. Many people, they will be using medicine. They will stop it because they, they, they are okay now. And when they stop, he goes from <laughs> 1,000 to minus 1,000. Because they do not realize that it is not them. It is that thing that they are using that is, that is giving them that stability. God is your stability. Don't depend on your own knowledge. Don't think about your career. Don't think about the job. Because many people minus that paycheck. God forbid it is um, kicking God forbid it to shelter. That is the reason why we cannot depend on the job. That is the reason why we cannot depend on any of these things. You will hear people making money and all of a sudden everything go down the drain. Don't depend on your ability to work. Because a time is coming when you will not be able to. Don't depend on anything. Depend solely on God. The job that you have, the career, the beautiful career, what you're doing, the beautiful money, the beautiful house that you're living, minus God, God forbid it is on the, uh, the thing that is coming to my head is in Yoruba. God forbid. Let us not depend on anything but God. Our Father is calling us to Himself. So arise. You did not arise like soldiers. You arise. <laughs> you stood up as if. <laughs> I don't know if she's talking to me. <laughs> I don't think this is for me. Arise. And take the position where God has kept you. Has prepared for you. So I want us to take about five minutes. About five minutes. Please, I want us to pray this prayer for just about five minutes. Because we have children's ministration and I, you know, we would, we would try to finish five minutes. Let us just begin to thank God for the opportunity to pray one more time. The, uh, the opportunity to pray this prayer. 
in case you have missed every part of the prayer of this month, you have the grace to pray it now. Let's thank God for the opportunity to pray this prayer now. I want you to begin to pray and ask God that the Lord will take you back. If you genuinely want to go back to him, if you genuinely want to depend on him as a child to their father, as a child to the, to, to the father, that the Lord will take you back. That the Lord will take you back. I surrender all to you. Daddy, I surrender my life to you. Father, I want you to take charge of my life from beginning to the end. I do not want to use my head knowledge. I do not want to depend on my ability. I do not want to depend on my job. I do not want to depend on the, the strength that I have on my own, but I want to rely on you. Daddy, I want to depend on you. Like the lost son, I have found my way back home. Lord Jehovah, King of glory, like the prodigal son of God, Daddy, I have come back, oh God, saying you are the one in charge of my life. Have your way in the name of Jesus. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my all to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I return back to you, oh God. I take my hands off the wheel and I say, Lord, that you will take charge. I say, Lord, that you will take control. I say, Lord, that you will do only what you alone can do in the name of Jesus. As you are preparing us, oh God, to go into the month of mercy. Daddy, I come back, oh God, that I may obtain mercy. I return back unto you that I may obtain mercy. In the name of Jesus, I come back, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, giving you all the control of my life in the name of Jesus. Lord, take charge, oh God, of every aspect of me. Take charge, oh God, of every aspect of me. In the name of Jesus, Christ, take control of my life, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I return back to you. In the name of Jesus, in the remaining hours, oh God, of this month, in the remaining days of this year, and many glorious years to come, I arise and I take my rightful position in the name of Jesus. I arise, oh God, and I take my rightful place in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I arise, I shine, oh God, as I journey into this week. I arise, I shine, oh God, as I journey into the month of May. In the mighty name of Jesus, into the remaining days of this year and many glorious years to come. In the name of Jesus, guys, I arise from sickness. Oh, I rise from fear, oh God. I arise from darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus, I arise, oh God, from sin. In the name of Jesus, I cross my Jordan into your prepared place for me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I cross my Jordan. In the mighty name of Jesus, I cross my Jordan and I walk into that place place that you have prepared for me. The place that is flowing with milk and honey. In the mighty name of Jesus. I receive it in Jesus' name. I walk into, into the name of Jesus. Jehovah, I rise, oh God, from everything that has held me bound. In the mighty name of Jesus, get your grip of me. In the name of Jesus, I'm going by the mighty name of Jesus. I am God in Jesus' name. I will not decline. I will not descend. I will not drop. I will not retire. I will not decrease. I will not fall. I will not plunge. In the name of Jesus, I will not recede. I will not retreat. I will not fade away. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I will not disappear. I stand a lot, oh God. I stand a lot, oh God. I am ready for action. I move into action. I shine because your word has said so. In the mighty name of Jesus, I go into that place that you have prepared for me. My leg will not reject it. My head will not reject it. In the mighty name of Jesus, I and oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, will not reject it. In the name of Jesus, I know that there is a shifting. I know that there is a shifting. I receive the shifting in the mighty name of Jesus. We move into that place that you have prepared for us. Our body, our spirit, and our soul obey the command of the Lord. Move in the name of Jesus. Get to that place in Jesus' name. Go to that place that the Lord has created for you. Receive it in Jesus' name. Accept it in the name of Jesus. There is a shifting. And I receive this shifting. In the name of Jesus. Position are changing. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord is relocating you from the very back to the front. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord's hands is upon you. 
in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Arise. Shine in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the mouth of the Lord had decreed it. We fall in position. We take the rightful place. Amen. We receive it because the mouth of the Lord had decreed it so. It's not only for this month. But we arise from everything that has held us captive. Amen. The snare is broken. Amen. And we escape. Amen. And we will never go back there. Amen. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we march into the month of mercy, we will obtain mercy. Amen. We will begin to think about it. We will begin to dwell upon it. Amen. We will begin to walk in it. Amen. Because the Lord cannot lie. He said that month, we will obtain mercy. Amen. And that's why he prepared us to arise. Because in the month that we are starting in few hours, God is arising. Amen. Psalm 102 verse 13 says that the Lord will arise. He told us to arise. And because we have taken that step, the Jordan has been parted. And we are walking into the prepared place. Because it is in us following the instruction. That is why God is arising to show us mercy will receive the mercy of the Lord in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. His mercy will take us to that prepared place. His mercy will lead us on the journey. The journey of 40 days will not become the journey of 40 years. We will not struggle for anything. Everything that we are supposed to have achieved before now, the Lord is cutting the, 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 the distance short. Amen. And he is taking us to that prepared place. Amen. That is why the Jordan is parting. Amen. So that you will not have to go merry go round. He is parting the Jordan for a quick access. Amen. And then you need to walk into your Jordan. Amen. And then walk through it to the prepared place. Amen. That is what your testimony will be. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Thank you almighty father. Amen. All the glory and honor belongs to you. We know we have been blessed tremendously. And we give you the thanks in, in advance for the miracles, signs, and wonders that we'll begin to see. Thank you for the manifestation of your words. We give all the praise and the glory to you. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are praying. Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us just tread put our hands to our pastor and begin to pray for her that indeed the Lord will